Wherever you were, that 15 minutes, whatever you did, seemed like a lifetime. <laughs> New players in the tunnel, new players in our change room, new players in the staff change room, kind of sitting everywhere, just waiting. Just what's the score? Straight to the TV. I know Sky were there for the for the day. You're trying to stay positive, and you're trying to um, keep believing that some good will come. <laughs> People weren't quite sure whether to be jubilant or whether to be hesitant, so um, yeah, not great at that point. I never thought I'd be, ever be chairing on Leeds, but there we go. Abdi hoping to hold the breakout, but it's on. Has McCormack stayed on side? Yes, he has. Oh, and he's gone for him out! Incredible! I needed to go and repair myself, you know, I've, I'd been at Sunland and when I got the phone call from Hull was um, come and give us a hand really, I mean, the goal for me was can we improve on what we did the, uh, the previous year, which I think the club finished eighth. Obviously when I looked at the squad in the, in the, in the, when I first took over, we certainly needed strengthening, you know, it suited the players that we had um, and on we went on this unbelievable journey and uh, that was the start of it the first year. I don't think we were the best team in the league, but what we had, we had a, a belief and we looked out for each other. Off the pitch, our wives were friends, we would go out together, we would probably drink a little bit too much together, which you can't get away with now, um, but we were together. One of the people I remember the most was actually was a young player, but he was a real leader in that dress, dressing room was James Chester. Um, he actually bought a house in Willoughby and he had Joe Dudgeon, Paul McShane, Robbie Brady, Cameron Stewart when he was here, they were all live he bought the house and he basically was their granddad. He just looked after them and, and that summed up what the group was. And if anyone had a problem, they'd be round at Chessies and sitting with, sitting with them. We had a lot of really strong characters, even though we were a young group, we had good people and people who cared about each other and it showed in our performances. I'm probably very fortunate that I ended up coming to a club like Hull because Hull to me is very similar to where I'm from in Ireland Cork. Um, People, the people are very stubborn in their own ways. They're very proud of being from where they're from. Um, and I think, I think a lot of Hull fans would have felt throughout the season, certainly the turning point after Christmas, that this team has a bit about them. This team can get promoted. Yeah, I remember we watched Leicester versus Watford uh, the night before, it was a big mistake, the night before we played Barnsley, so that was a, I think that was a Friday night game, and we got the result that we wanted and we knew it was in our hands. Um, looking back, we were celebrating over dinner and we were, you know, really, really excited, overexcited for the game against Barnsley. We'd been on a tear and then we went, went to Wolves, we lost at Wolves, so I think went down that season, 1-0. Uh, then we drew at home to Bristol City, then we went to Barnsley, like I said, I think there was about Six, six and a half thousand of us out of a crowd of 15,000. I think the whole took the whole city there uh, to support us and we, and, we, and we choked on the day. We were absolutely abject. And I remember they scored after pretty much the first kick of the game. Um, and it put us, I think it put us into a bit of shock and we never really recovered from that. Craney with the clearance. Away by Steele, towards O'Grady. Dagnall, O'Grady, lovely little touch on. Off the underside of the barn, did that cross the line? Yes it did, Barnsley are in front! Well, it's a goal that will have reverberations around the whole of the championship this afternoon. Dagnall. O'Grady almost got in his way, O'Grady! What a fantastic strike from Chris O'Grady and Barnsley double their advantage. They scored early in the first half and they have struck again early in the second. That's the championship in a nutshell really, isn't it? Like, 
we were always flirting between fifth, fourth and third and kind of jumping up and down. And then as you know, you kind of land in a situation where you know now you're at the end part of the season where you have those six, seven games left where you're thinking, well, this is it. I think when you get so close to doing something so amazing, the closer you get to it, the more nerves you feel. And, you know, we were being chased down and we could never seem to get over the line. In the group, there were a lot of nerves. We had a lot of young players, you know, like, like Sir Robbie Brady and, and, and David Myler at the time was very young as well. Um, and I remember, feel, I could sense it the day before the game. Uh, we were in the gym and the lads are stretching, no one's really talking to each other. And I started a game of cricket with uh, one of those, you know, like a foam roller? I've got a tennis ball, I said, lads, come on, let's just play cricket, let's do something different. So we're messing around in the gym. And it was just because I sensed how nervous everyone was. And Paul McShane, bless him, wanted to kill me. He, he shouted at the, from the other end of the gym, I can't believe you lot are playing cricket before the biggest game of our lives. And it was precisely why I wanted us to play cricket because we wanted it so bad. It was such a good group of people. Um, and I felt, me personally, um, I didn't feel any pressure going into the game. I was just so excited and I wanted to share that with the group. A lot of us were okay. Even though we were playing Cardiff, we were champions at the time. Um, we'd heard various different things that they were out partying. But we were fully focused, say, kind of from the Monday onwards towards the game, thinking, Yes, you know Watford play Leeds. Leeds this season is more or less done. They can't get playoffs, they can't be relegated. You're thinking what kind of Leeds team is going to turn up. So there's all things running through your mind, but at the same time, our fate was in our own hands. If we, if we win our final game, then we get promoted. Training was very intense. It was probably the best week of training I'd had since I'd been there because everyone was kind of fully focused. The manager, the coaching staff, the players. There was a nice feel amongst the group. Well, I would say it was more excitement than nerves. I think after after what happened at Barnsley, brought everybody down that focused on the on the job ahead. That we've still got one game to come, and that's why, and that's why I, I changed I changed the system for us to give them something else in the week. And of course, it was exciting, nervous, tension amongst everybody. You know, to get to the Premier League was what everybody wanted. And of course, there's a apprehension, a nervousness, a tension. You could you could smell that all week, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, but that's what football's all about: handling it, getting on with it, and doing the job. It was. Mixed emotions because you're thinking Cardiff have or, had already won the league at that point. So they, they didn't really have anything on the line, but then they're also playing with that sort of confidence, that freedom that comes with that, that situation. So um, didn't quite know what to expect. And it, I guess it's always a case of typical city. You can't take anything for granted. The messages were clear. We knew the game plan. We knew what we needed to do. We were focused. Um, the players were, like I said, had trained well all week. It might seem like a small detail, but those things do matter. The warm-up was intense. You know, the whole kind of vibe around the change room was positive. Um, and the, the messages were the same. Like, you know your roles, you know your responsibilities. You've got to go out and you've got to perform. You've got to get a result and you've got to win. Yeah, no, that he was one of the best I ever worked with in terms of gauging the mood of the group. Um, I think he sensed that we were young. Uh, we had big Abdullah Faye, who was like a leader. The rest of us were, uh, you know, in our mid-20s or younger, so I think he knew that we wanted to do it so badly, he wanted to take the pressure off um, and he did that um, and he, he wanted us to go out and play, he changed the system. I remember I came in because I'd been on the bench and he'd gone a little bit more attacking and made a lot of changes to the team which I think freshened it up. Hey, listen, when you're in a promotion push the hardest thing is to get over the line and, um, and all the good football that we played we become a bit edgy, nervous, all the rest of it that, which is normal. We all knew the consequences of it. Look after Barnsley defeat, they were still in our hands. We still had, if we win today, we go up. Well, what a final day we have for you. Almost every issue to be decided, whether it be promotion, playoff places, or relegation. All that we do know here is that Hull City kick off in second, and they kick off against the Empower Championship champions. In the first 45 minutes, very tense, there wasn't a lot happening. I don't, I don't particularly remember any side having clear-cut chances. I th as I remember it, there was a, a bloke 
couple of rows in front of us who had the <laughs> you know the radio on so yeah I think we knew about all the developments obviously there was the massive stoppage the, when the keeper had a head injury we knew about how delayed that game had been I think everything with me is can I ever be calm <laughs> I suppose so you try to be because you know we were we were playing well that was the most important thing because the last couple of games before that we had forgot how to play the game so um, it was just about trying to keep everybody focused on what the job was ahead. Um, that's not easy when it's a big game and some of these players had never been in the Premier League before. Some had of course, a lot of them hadn't been so it was a big, big, big team effort from everybody. Watford, 16 added minutes, but the first half at Hull City has produced no goals, but at the moment that's enough for Steve Bruce, Asi Milan and everyone associated with the Tigers. Half-time, Hull City nil, Cardiff City nil, Hull are heading up as it stands. Um. There's written in the script there, it could only be Fraser, right? Um, I don't know if I could say that, but I wanted to kill him. Mental. Um, yeah, I, th I, I imagine everyone expected Campbell to score. Well, you see it time and time again, you can go through the motions, and indeed fully intend to give of your best, but without that real competitive edge, often things are missing. Oh, here comes Fraser Campbell, massive moment, he's rolled it in! Fraser Campbell gives the champions the lead at the KC Stadium. Are Hull going to fluff their lines on this final day? I get most people are well aware that me and Fraser are really good friends. So obviously when he scored, I was heartbroken. We'd always given him stick. So uh, yeah, I, I don't blame him. I always took it in good spirits, but yeah. Anyone that knows me, you know, I'm, I'm very rarely serious. Um, I've got a great uh, relationship with the, with the whole fans anyway. So, you know, when I came and, and um, came off the bench and scored, it was just a tongue-in-cheek moment. You know, it's, it's part of me, it's part of my character. It was never in a malicious way. I was secretly hoping that, you know, they'd, they'd um, get the points that they needed to, to, to go straight up. So it was, um, it was a fun day. Another day that I look back and think, you know, draws me back to, to Hull. It was really unjust, really, because, um, I mean, it was, I think, the first attack um, and the score. So, um, again, though, pretty much so of the squad. I think that summed the squad up of just how good they were and how they never gave up. And we had some strong characters and some big players who, even in a goal down, we, we turned it round. That's been gifted. Here's Brady. Just wants to cut back, Brady gives it to Myla! Way by Marshall, Kim hasn't got enough on that, Quinn could bounce. Chance, goal! Prospects levels it up for Hull, they are right back in business! Brady's corner, McShane! Hull City take the lead! Hull City head to the Premier League! It was surreal because you're one nil down and then obviously you think, OK, we'll get chances, it's just you got to take them. Certainly when we scored our goals, it just gave, it gave everyone a lift. When I reflect back on those times, they were incredible when you look at like, the amount of people were there and the atmosphere was just electric and everybody was chanting, cheering. Like, that's, what, that's what being a professional footballer is, that's what when you play in those moments when you have those those games when it matters so much to people. And a red card. A more valuable second 
Sometimes he's not. Two smiles, just pushing their lives away. Not very often in this life that you do that. Looking for a penalty there. It's been given by the assistant on this near side. I felt so, so comfortable. Like the penalty, I'm, I remember just being really calm, thinking, right, that's it, 3 1, game's done, um, and that's football. Everything was going well, we were playing well, they were never really a threat. Um, it was just a matter of getting over the line, you know, and, um, um, and, and we, didn't, we didn't manage it. Prostrates, he's missed it. Trying to get promotion, knowing that we scored a penalty, we're up. To that minute was just arguably the worst I think I've ever felt in, in, uh, in, in probably all the time I've been playing. To be that cruel with what just happened in that 30 seconds was quite amazing. It's hard to explain because when you're on the pitch and you've got so many emotions, sometimes you're so shocked you just don't feel anything. In the space of two to three minutes, you've gone from two one up to going three one up to now being two all. And it's just like, how, how have we gotten to this situation? It was a super save, a full stretch from Marshall, but Nick Proschwitz, who's already scored one, misses from the penalty spot. Oh. Huge goals elsewhere. Anthony Knockart in the last minute puts Leicester City ahead at Nottingham Forest. Milicheninak for Crystal Palace puts them ahead against Peterborough. Let's have a look what it does to the bottom of the Empire Championship table. Oh, it's loose in the box. Handball penalty. penalty. Final drama, a twist in the final minute here. Nicky Maynard, who has not kicked a ball in anger since September before today, scores. You could not ask for more drama in the final minute of the season. Hull, who had a Premier League place in their hand, may yet have blown it. Just watch the score, straight to the TV. I know Sky were there for the, for the day. It was right, let's just go and, and watch that. You're, you're trying to stay positive. But you're trying to um, keep believing that some good will come. So those 15 minutes, I have to tell you, I, I sat in a corner somewhere of the KC Stadium and everywhere I looked, people were <laughs> hiding away, listening to radio or TV or whatever they were, were trying to tune in. I didn't want to do any of that. You have players in the tunnel, you have players in our change room, you have players in the staff change room kind of sitting everywhere just waiting. Absolutely phase in the toilet crying because he thinks that he's cost us promotion. A big man who was the bravest guy in the world crying in the toilet will always stick with me. But we were up and we were in the dressing room, we were up and down the tunnel, in corridors, it was manic. People weren't quite sure whether to be jubilant or whether to be, you know, a bit hesitant. So, um, yeah, not great at that point, but still, you know, we knew that we had a decent chance and that Watford were down, a man down. We all had an awful 15 minutes, whether you're a supporter, owner, manager, player, wherever you were, that 15 minutes, whatever you did, seemed like a lifetime. And I never thought I'd be, ever be chairing on Leeds, but there we go. I can't. You're in a phase in your, in your own being where you're kind of just responding to what you're seeing around, around you. I cannot remember a thing. Chabot looking to put some pressure on Lees. Well, it's absolutely relentless now. Hoping to hold the breakout, but it's on. Has McCormack stayed on side? Yes, he has. Oh, and he's got bottom out! Incredible! Um, yeah. 
For us as a group, getting promoted from the Championship to the Premier League as a player changes your life. And it felt like it was in God's hands or it was in someone else's hands when you're, when you're watching it. So those feelings of being so distraught from, from what had happened to being so happy at the final outcome was something that honestly, it was absolutely incredible. Like that whole emotion, like just thinking back, I've watched that kind of six, seven minutes, Sky Sports have a little thing of it, but it's just crazy stuff. The way it was, you couldn't write that script. Nobody could have written that script, and that's why it's probably one of the most iconic games that the, that the stadium's ever seen. Surely must have now. That is it. Hull City are heading to the Premier League. Wonderful, wonderful scenes at the KC. A nervous wait for them, but the prize is theirs. the start wasn't it I mean you know I look back and I and I think the, the most enjoyable four years of me managerial career you know I've been gone 20 odd years now and I don't think I'll, I'll I'll have another one I don't think all I can think of was happy days at the stadium that's the way it was but um, yeah happy times <laughs>